my friend making 12,000 a month. It's actually 12,900 because he's doing some uh, 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 extra work. Expenses starting out at 10,000. We got a half a mil of debt. We're like, how do we do this? Cash flows anywhere from 2K to 2,500 a month. And we got this home equity line of credit, okay, with the interest rate starting out 2.99%. Not bad at all. All right. Here's what we're going to do we are going to apply the two thirds method for velocity banking, which is we take the 40K times it by 66%. Bomb. That's your first chunk. What are we going to chunk at? He's got credit card. He's got two cars. He's got policy loans on his infinite banking policies. He's got uh, student loan debt and we got the mortgage. So strategically, it made more sense for us to tackle the cars first and one of his credit cards. Reason being, I can increase his cash flow immediately. So by taking this $26,400, we are wiping out one car. Bam. That Chevy paid for. Thank you. Uh, he's going to wipe out a credit card. And then the rest is going to partially pay off car number two, the Ford. Partially. Okay. And now we do velocity banking. Okay. So. The first move of velocity banking, right, is you get the debt tool, get the line of credit, you get approved. We figure out step two, our chunk. Step three, we make the chunk. Where do we make the chunk? We take it out of the, the HELOC and transfer the money to the check and account, though, okay, which then we pay the debt, okay? Make the chunk. And now what? He's going to make money. So any and all cash that this gentleman has on hand right now, plus the money that we're going to make for, for February, is going to go back into the HELOC. Notice how the balance drops to 13900 Now we got expenses, okay? But notice how they're no longer 10000 it's going to be 9367 63 for the very first month because we partially paid the second car. So we're not going to have a payment. We're no longer going to have a payment on car number one, and we're no longer going to have a payment on his credit card. So when it's all said and done in, in one month, balance goes down, goes back up. That's what it looks like in, in one month's time frame. Okay. 23,267.63. Okay. With minimal interest costs, maybe it's $23,325. Okay. It's not even worth displaying because he's not even gonna, he's not gonna see it, he's not gonna feel it. Because the very next month, boom, we're gonna dump another 12K in, take expenses out. If we do this consistently consistently where we dump income in and we take the expenses out and we keep cash flow in and we keep doing this flow where we feel real good about ourselves okay somewhere around june or july is when we're going to make our second chunk all right now he doesn't have to take twenty six thousand again why he only owes Eh, like 12k on on car number two so we're simply going to do a chunk of that wipe it out okay and now i'm going to pose a question to the class okay and i'm going to give you the scenario here so so far from january to june or july we would have paid off two cars, and a credit card, okay? Now, here's the situation. This gentleman has life insurance policies. 
He has assets. Before he met me, he got life insurance policies designed for the infinite banking concept. Okay? So I work with everyone. All right? Some people just want help on, on this part, the functionality. And I'd be glad to serve you. Okay? So he's got policies on himself, on wife, on the kids. I'm like, yes, this guy's a king. I love hanging out with kings. They know what they're doing. All I'm doing is just making little tweaks here, little tweaks just to help uh, help him, you know, get on the right path. So somewhere around August, September, the balance on the HELOC should be, you know, by August should be somewhere around 19K after making the chunk in June or July. And if we wait till September, balance should be somewhere around 15K. So we've got plenty of space in the HELOC. The question is, where should we be chunking it? Should we get started on the student loans? Or, or the other situation is he has these policy loans. He has, he has a loan on his policy, and he has a loan on his wife's policy. So what I wrote was, all right, either we pay the policy loan in full on one policy, okay? Mind you, he owes money on the life insurance policy, right? He has a loan. But we also have the premium for the, for the new year, okay, coming up. So his anniversary date for, for wife and, him, and himself is somewhere around here, okay? So here's the question. With space of, you know, between 40K and 19 or 15, the question is, what should we chunk at? What I'm thinking in my brain, here are your options. Either we pay the policy loan, and this is me talking to my friend here, either you pay the policy loan and the premium for the year, option one. Option two, you pay the premium only. And then we start on the student loans. Even though he owes money on his policies, understand that however much money he owes, whether he pays it back over a five-year timeline, a 10-year timeline, it, as long as the dividends and the guarantees are matching his policy loan interest rate every single year it offsets so he'll have no lost opportunity cost so what we can do temporarily is say hey listen just pay the policy premium for the year pay the whole thing from your HELOC Let's chunk at it for the whole year to increase our cash flow, number one, to satisfy the insurance policy itself for the year, along with the PUA, right? Because he's going to have a premium cost, but then he has his PUA. So he's got like a total amount of money that he's putting into the policy. I think he's, I think he's putting in like 10K a year or something like that, okay, or a little bit more, whatever it is. Pay your premium in full. Pay wife's premium in full. Let that money, let that money and the cash value, pay the policy loan inside of the policy. Let it pay itself. And then let's do velocity banking out here. Let's wipe out the cars, which is what we did. Then we'll get started on your student loans. Okay. And then we'll we'll jump, probably we'll jump back to the policy loans, make sure those are those are good. And then we'll jump on the mortgage. He's got a mortgage that he's paying. He's got these big student loan payments, the you know, the the, the car payments. Okay, when I added up all the numbers, it came out to somewhere around eighty-eight thousand dollars in a 12-month period. Okay. In a 12-month period. $88,000 we pay off in the very first year, 
Okay. So what I'm factoring in is this chunk, the second chunk, okay, and then the third chunk, which is going to pay his premiums on the life insurance, okay, and then a portion of that is then going to start on the student loan. So, so towards, you know, like November, December, we'll probably have the ability to make another chunk towards the uh, student loans. Okay, so I basically just, I took his mortgage payment times it by 12. I took wife's student loans times it by 12. His student loans times it by 12. The full balances on the cars and the credit card, okay, as well as the cost of his life insurance for the year came out to $88,000, give or take. You take that number and you divide it by the half a mil. And my friend here, conservatively, in about 5.8 years or less, my man, brethren, is debt free. Okay, my brother is debt free. Okay, one of the few households probably in California that can say, they own their property outright. Uh -huh. And they did it in less than six years. Another thing that's benefiting this gentleman here, okay, because he was doing velocity banking a little bit prior to meeting me. So what he's doing throughout the months is he's putting all his income into the HELOC. Before he takes all of his spanks, all of his expenses out. He's using his Capital One credit card as a line of credit, and he's using anywhere from four to forty-five hundred dollars of expenses that he can pay with credit. All this does is buy him time. Okay, it's not necessarily increasing his cash flow, but it's just buying him time. He's probably earning cash back rewards on this, which is cool. Okay, and he's paying even less interest by having more of his 12,000 sit in the HELOC throughout the month. So, you know, when we're when we're working together one on one, my goal is to figure out, you know, when to chunk, how much to chunk, and then the the functionality, the mechanics of when we pull money out, keep money in. Right. I have like a little rule where I'm like, all right, every three to five days, I kind of look how many uh, expenses do I have over the next three to five days after making that first chunk. Right. And then once I figure that out, I'm like, all right. That's how much money I'm going to withdraw out of my HELOC, put in the checking account. And then I just use the checking account. Pay it. Let, let bills just come out over the next three or five days. Or if you want to be even more slick, if you can handle it, there's people that cannot handle it because it's too much, where now you've got a second debt tool that we're using, you're playing with, and now you're using the credit card to run the expenses, okay? And we're not pulling money out of the HELOC. And then in 30 days, you're going to have that bill you got to make sure you take out a nice portion of money out of the HELOC and zero that out completely and then start using the credit card again. 